talk about 3D and uh, one thing I really uh, I'm really convinced about is that in the next couple of years we will see a lot of 3D games I mean triple A games running on the browser right now with the um, initiative of for instance Mozilla with SMGS and some stuff uh, we are also doing with IE we are pushing the limit of the web and without plugin, just by using a th um, WebGL, we'll be able to have really great games. That's why with some um, friends of mine, we decided to create something uh, to help web developers creating games without having to deal with math, shaders, WebGL plumbing, which is a bit annoying. We wanted to have something really, really simple. I mean, we wanted to have something that can allow you guys to create a game and just focus on the game and not the plumbing. We create for that Babylon JS. And for the next 20 minutes, I will try to shrink my time. Uh, we will talk, I will show you how to use it. My name is David Ketu. I'm working for Microsoft. And I will do three crazy things. I will use Windows. I will use IE. And I will use Visual Studio. So yeah. It will be just uh, different. Uh, here is my handle, at Delta Coach. Feel free to contact me on uh, Twitter. My mail is there, and my blog is here. So first of all, I would like to show you how to use Babylon.js. So let's move here. Try to. Sounds good. OK, so just I just need. Visual Studio here to have some kind of local web, uh, web uh, server. OK, so the only thing I need is to create a website. It's not related to Visual Studio. I'm joking. You can use whatever you want, just as long as you have a web server. So let's just use a blank website here. And I will just drop in Babylon.js, create Oh, that's interesting. You can't see it. OK, let's duplicate it. Should be great. Not better. Ah, yeah. Sounds good, guys? OK, so I will just had a web page. Let's find a web page right there. And I will call it index.html. In this web page, I just had here Babylon.js. The only thing you need is a canvas. Who is, we are already played with WebGL here. Hmm. OK, let's say 5%. OK. Absolutely, I can. Is it powerful? Yeah. <laughs> it's Visual Studio. <laughs> Did I mention that? So let's call it canvas. And uh, what I want to do here, just add some CSS quickly, just to be sure that my canvas will use all the screen. So HTML, body, and canvas will be full screen. And 100% with, same thing, 8. Sorry about that. It's just to have something. Really beautiful to see you, to show you. OK, sounds good. And what I want to do here, let's close that, is add a script. And in this script, I will just create an engine. An engine is for you the, um, the best tool to not deal with WebGL. The engine will do everything related for, to WebGL for you. So you just have to create a new Babylon dot engine object right there. Give it the canvas. Let me grab it. Yep. And name of the canvas is canvas. OK, and use it here. When you create the engine, the second thing you have to do is create a scene. The scene is the container or everything you want to display on your screen. So it's like in, in movies. Let's create a new babylon.scene. And the scene only need to know who is the engine. Once the scene is created, you can create a camera. So the camera is you, is your point of view. 
where are you in the scene? There is a lot of camera, there are a lot of different camera in uh, Babylon GS. I will use a um, arc rotate camera. The arc rotate camera is a camera that will rotate around the central pivot, okay? So it's really convenient to, for instance, look into some specific object. It's new Babylon dot arc rotate, rotate camera. Let's give it a name like camera. Two value, this is the different angle. There is two angle to position an object on a sphere uh, called that alpha and beta, so let's say zero. The radius of the, sp of the sphere, let's say 10. And the center, which is the center of the pivot, it will be here, babylon.vector3.0. And finally, the scene. Once the camera is created, we can ask the camera to get all the control on your canvas. I mean, all the input, touch, mouse, whatever, will be handled for you by the camera. If you want to, just, to do some gesture to pinch, zoom, whatever, the camera will take care of that for you and will move accordingly. So the camera just have to call attach, attach control on the canvas. Then we need a light. So let's create something like a, a small sun, which is a Babylon dot point light. This point light should have a name, light. We'll also have a position, it's just a point, a dot. And we are in 3D, so we need the vector three, it's X, Y, Z. Uh, let's put it in, let's say, far from us, somewhere there, and always the scene. So we have the camera, we have the light, the missing stuff is an object. Let's create a sphere. It's babylon.mesh.create sphere. So a sphere has a name. It has a definition. Remember that you are working with 3D, so everything is based around triangle, even a sphere. So if you want to create a sphere, we have to define the tessellation, which means how many triangle what the definition was the resolution of our sphere. So let's base on 32. The radius of the sphere will be, let's say, three, and the scene. And that's it, the scene is complete. What we need right now is to ask the scene to render as fast as possible, okay? And on modern browser, we have something called request animation frame, which handle that for you. Each time the browser wants to display a frame, it will call you, you will do what you want to do, and then the browser will display your frame. On browser that doesn't support that, you can use set timeout, for instance. So just to be convenient here, we can ask just the um, engine to run the render loop, which is the, the technical term, with an anonymous function. And during this function, the only thing we want to do is just call render on the scene. And I think I'm done. If there is no bug, oh. It's a sphere. The bad idea is that I have a rook rotate camera on a spherical object, so you won't see when I move. You just, just see the light moving a bit. But I, when I move with my mouse, and I rotate around my sphere. What I can do right now is just add some texture. Let's play with that quickly. I will add this one and this one. Because right now the sphere is a bit, let's say, simple. The material, is for you the convenient, the convenient way to not deal with shaders. I will go back to that after, but right now I just have to declare a new Babylon dot standard, standard material. This material will have a name and a scene, and the sphere will use it as a material. Okay? The material will allow you to create shaders without having to code the shaders. For instance, I want to use a diffuse texture. The diffuse texture is the texture that will be used for the basic color of the object according to the light. Okay, so right now the object is white. When the light is on it, it's white. Where there is no light, it's black, okay? And right now I want to have an object a bit more complex, so I want to use a texture to define the color of the object when the light, light lit it. So, it's a new Babylon dot texture. The texture is html5.png, which is in my project, and the scene is just the scene. 
far better. We have something interesting. It, the light is at a specific position, and the light is not moving. I'm just rotating my camera around the object. What I can do quickly is just use my render loop here to say that light dot position is equal to camera dot position. Position. So the light will be on my head like this. So when I move, the light will move with me. Interesting. What can I decide also? And I have plenty of options right there, but I can decide that the diffuse texture right there, which is a PNG, and so the texture contain alpha. I can define that alpha is enabled, so the shaders will understand that when there is an alpha value equal to zero, the pixel must not be drawn, okay? And just by adding this line, the object right now, is not a complete sphere. And as you can see, Babylon GS is removing the back face, just to be sure that we don't display too much faces. But in this case, we need to display the back, the back face. So I just ask the material back face curling to disable that angle force. And then I can see inside my object. I can go further and I can add something named the bump. If you're a gamer, the bump texture or normal map is something really used. It's a technical way to simulate a volume without having to deal with triangle. In fact, the object is uh, only a two triangle, really simple, but with a texture applied on it, we can simulate the modification of the light. We call that the bump. It's a bit complex if you want to develop that, but with WLNGS, you just have to say that the bump texture, same way, is a new texture that we can use here, and this time the name is normal, normal map dot jpeg. And as you can see, we can fill the volume. Nothing different on the geometry side. This is the same object. Oops. I can play with the touch, obviously. And as you can see, we fill the volume because the light is not perfectly applied on the surface of the object. There is some scratches, and we can fill the volume. All right. Back to the slides. I shouldn't have that there. That's not a good idea. All right. If you are like me, I hate learning new things using documentations. I know that a lot of people spend a lot of time writing documentation, but I hate that. I really hate that. I prefer experimenting. I prefer learning and trying my new toys on some kind of sandbox or things like that. As a developer, I think I have to switch again to duplicate. Sorry about that. Yeah. As a developer, I created for you a tool called the Playground. Let's go with it. You can experiment it right now. It's on babylongs.slash playground. It's a place where you can try specific babylongs features without, without having to deal with um, creating an HTML, an index.html. Mm, sounds like I could use my local version. As you can see here, oh, not great. Okay, grunt, no, there's no, no problem with that. Let's go to the playground. We should have the same thing online. Almost. <laughs> oh, my network is just broke down, yeah, I know. Trying to make it work, I'm sorry guys. That's a wonderful demonstration. No. I'm connected. Just for your pleasure.
OK. So let's imagine the playground looks like this stuff. It's a place where you can, well, on the left side, you have some kind of um, editor, where you, a code editor where you can type in and select whatever you want to do. And you can just try it immediately because the right side of the application is just a live example of what you just code. And I would have loved to make it work. Oh, thanks, God. Okay, so, yeah, this is the best of my demonstration. So here you have a playground where you can see, and just on the left side, you see that you can create a camera, attach control, create a light, just what I did, and just try things. Each time you want to learn new thing, we have some kind of tutorial right there. For instance, let's play with shadows. Okay, so as you can see, loading asset, on, okay, it's okay. So you just have this kind of environment. It's an eight map. It's a plane deformed using a texture, and there is a donut flying with two shadows, which is the interesting part and not the flying donuts. And all the code is here. It's less than 30 lines of code. We really try hard to be sure that each time you want to do something, it's with the minimal amount of code. You can go in uh, some kind of advanced mode if you want. You can deal with shadow. You can deal with everything related to WebGL. But for that the beginner of the, or the people that don't, don't want to mess with that, you just have to stick with the first level API. Here you can see I create two lights. Each light has some specific stuff around shadow, which is there called the shadow generators, and the shadow generator will do everything for you. It will generate the map, apply it on the object, it do everything for you. All right. You can also create, I'm sorry about this uh, presentation, it's easy because each time it changes the resolution. You can also deal with shaders. It's the interesting part. Shaders can allow you to go really deep into high quality visual. I mean, you can create things like that with a new tool called CYOS, which means create your own shader. Okay. It's, this time, you will have specific object, the sphere, a torus, or my preferred the knot. And you just have here the vertex shader and the pixel shader. And using this small amount of code, which will be executed on the GPU side, it's GLSL, it's a specific language, it looks like C. You can explain to the GPU how each pixel are rendered. And if you want to play with that, there is some sample here. The basic one is just reading a texture. Then you can go a bit complex uh, and adding some kind of black and white and adding cell shading like in video game and Fong, which is the name of the guy that find how the light equation is defined and blah, 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 and you can play with some kind of funny things like the, the wave. Everything, sorry, everything is just GLSL, is just shader code. And if you want to do that, guys, you can experiment using CYOS, and then you can use it on your own code, and I prepare for you a specific sample right there. So same, same story, I just reference Babylon.js, and there I create a script with a type, which is not JavaScript, just to be sure that the browser don't want to compile it. It's the code that I copy past from there. The first one here, and the second one, the vertex and the pixel shaders. I put them here, and then I do the same thing. I create a canvas, an engine, a scene, a light, a tour with a cam, and the material I use right there is a shader material meaning you take the control over how a pixel is defined. You have to create the shaders, put that code into your page, and just use this object. So if I run this page, my donut here, I apply on it some kind of cartoon red effect just by creating the shader material right there. We try to keep things simple. You just have to mess with WebGL. You just define how the shader is, and all the stuff, all the plumbing is done. 
then you can see here it's some kind of developer demonstration. I mean, it's a sphere, a donut, okay? If you want to create a game, unless you have some great idea with donut and sphere, it will be limited, let's say. You will have to work with graphics or 3D artists. And to do that, they won't use Sublime Text, Visual Studio, whatever. They will use their own DCC. They will use their own data creation tools. And one of them is Blender. It's a free open source project, extremely powerful, where you can create really beautiful scenes. We decided to support Blender. And to do that, it's pretty easy. Let me just create something. The best I can do is create a monkey head. It's easy. For the record, this monkey head name is Susan. I don't know why. And as you can see, there is a camera right there. So it's perfect. And there is two objects. I will just add a plane here. I will zoom it to be sure it's a ground for me. OK. And what we did, we added some specific functionality into Blender to allow you to control up, specific properties. And when you want, you just want to export Babylon.js file right there. And you just have to load it into your page. So let me just select something here. I'm not really. OK, it's OK. Here, you can see some specific Babylon.js features. For instance, for my ground, I want my ground to check collision, meaning I don't want the camera to go through this object. I want the camera to consider it as a solid object, OK? Then, for my camera right there, I also want to have collision and gravity. And the gravity is like in, uh, on Earth. It's down, going down. Then. On the monkey head, I will add something different. I will add physics. I want the head to use the physics engine and be considered as a box, for instance, with a mass of one. And for the cube, I will do the same thing. I will consider it as a box with a mass of one. And the ground, I will consider it as a box, but I don't want the ground to fall down. I want the ground to remain where is it to remain static? So I just define a mass of zero. It's a bit strange. Doing that, I just have to export everything uh, on my desktop, for instance. And Blender will generate for me a .babylon file. You can load that using this kind of code. And by the way, I will show you also the sandbox during the same time. Trying to load things. So the sandbox is just a place for designers to just drag and drop into the browser the generated file just to be sure that they are look OK. They can try and simulate how the object will appear when it will be rendered using Babylon.js. Uh, yeah, that's it. OK. You just drag and drop thing here, and you can see that they are physics. And I can move with my camera. And if I go out of the world, oh, I'm just falling down. Yeah. It's strange. To load this kind of file, it's just one line of code. Same thing. You just have to call scene loader. Oh, please. Scene loader dot load and it will load for you the file and everything will be accessible. A new scene is created for you, a new camera, a new object, everything as uh, I've shown you prefer, uh, just before but with just one line of code because it's coming from Blender. We also uh, spend a lot of time working on different input. input. You can, we handle the touch, the pointer event stuff, even on Chrome and Firefox because we are using end.js which is a polyfill for uh, pointer events. We also use a device orientation so you can move your tablet or whatever and just uh, control your camera. Virtual joystick with two fingers on touch mode, like in, uh, on the phone, for instance. Anaglyph camera if you want to have uh, the um, 3D effect with uh, red and, and green. 
and Oculus. With just one line of code, you can plug an Oculus on Babylon GS and have your uh, head movement that can control the camera. Uh, something I will just show you quickly, and I will go to this one. Because we support, this is the Microsoft moment. Because we support uh, HTML5 and JavaScript as native language, you can just create a new project, which is named Universal App, drag and drop inside everything like Babylon JS, the code that you, sorry, the code that you want to use here. Oh, I have the code to load something here. Babylon Synloader.import mesh will load the skull.babylon file, which is just there. And if I execute that on my emulator right there, it will be a new native app. Yeah, it's a skull. It's not mine, not yet. And using touch, you can, I don't know if it's a good game, but you can play with a skull. Perhaps I can win some money with that. I just have to publish that on the application store of Windows Phone. I can do the same thing with Windows 8, nothing else. Just put your JavaScript code and it works. And finally, but not the last, as you probably notice, I'm French, <laughs> and Ubisoft also. And we decided to work with them to prove that a big brand, I mean Ubisoft, can create games on the web. Obviously, there is a lot of problem we have to deal with, like uh, IP protection and things like that. It's another part of the problem, but right now, the feasibility, the thing that uh, studio, a game studio can create a game and push it on the web, we did that with Assassin's Creed Pirate. So if you want to try it, it's Babylon JS running with the assets of Assassin's Creed Pirate. The game is pretty simple, it's a, it's a race. You have to go through all the, the waypoint like this. You can change the weather if you want to go something more different. Yeah, it's the end of the, of the world. Yeah, it's better. It's Florida. I uh, do all the race in one minute and 10 seconds, just to let you know. Do what you want. And for you developers, we also launch a contest, and you can win uh, Xbox One, obviously, with Assassin's Creed Pirate Black Chess Edition. This is the only way to win that specific edition. I don't know what, what they're inside. I'm sure there is a lot of cool stuff. You just have to go there. So let me show you, if I can. So create your own shader slash ACPF for Assassin's Creed Pirate Race. It's the same shader editor, but you can play with the pirate ship, the Assassin's Creed Pirate ship. And you can try to create a specific shader for that ship. Okay, not, not yet. Uh, and if your shader is the best one, you will win the, the Xbox One and the Black Chest Edition. Okay, so... I go quickly on that. Ah, uh, oh, crap. I click on the full screen button. Everything is free. Everything is on GitHub. It's not a Microsoft-related project. I will like to insist on that. It's my project. It's a personal project. I spend all my night, my wife rather recognize me right now, uh, on that. I, it's open source. You can contribute. It's pure JavaScript. No. We moved to TypeScript two weeks ago. It's pure TypeScript right now, but you can contribute if you want using JavaScript. Everything that you may want to have in a 3D engine should be there. If not, just let me know and I will add it. So it's a, it's a commitment. Uh, some specific and useful link. Thank you.